In ninth place, the Western Bulldogs. Right, Western Bulldogs. They should have been in the eight as well. <laughs> but this wasn't because of umpiring, it was because they choked it. Um, all they had to do was beat either Hawthorne or West Coast. Just one of those games would have been fine. Hawthorne in Tasmania uh, and West Coast at Marvel. <laughs> um, somehow lost both and didn't make it. That was... That was very strange, because uh, the Bulldogs uh, looked decent. They looked like they could at least compete with big teams. Uh, maybe not the whole game. There were, there were a few games against uh, Geelong, Collingwood, Port Adelaide. Uh, I think it was in a similar period, actually, where they did well, kept up for three quarters, and the last quarter slipped away. Um, it kind of happened a few times that season, but they did at least show they could compete with certain big teams, you know, compete with the big guns when they're at their best, when they can keep consistent. Um, and even though they, did, they lost quite a few games against big teams, they still showed they could be a threat. And I reckon they uh, definitely could have been a threat in the finals. But then in the end, in round 22 and 23, they lost to Hawthorne in 16th and West Coast in 18th. Made zero sense. But uh, yeah, that, that is definitely a, a failure right there to miss out on the finals because they couldn't win these winnable games. They lost three of their last five. Just looking at the ladder right now so they lost it right at the end you know they looked pretty strong like they didn't look top four strong but at one point they were fifth they looked definitely like 58 strong um and then it just slipped away because teams that were nowhere near the eight were beating them so it is what it is um i guess they will come back next year i don't know it's they're very unpredictable like you could predict them to do to be in the eight or you can predict them 14th Neither one's a bad prediction. Like Western Bulldogs are very unpredictable in what they do. They, they make no sense sometimes. They really do make no sense. So I'm intrigued to see how they do next season. Very intrigued. But this season, ultimately, considering the context of the last few rounds, it's definitely a, fa a failure because they could have easily been playing finals. And quite frankly, if we swapped Saints and Swans for Dogs and Crows, that's the stronger finals. Even though we had a good finals, I, I felt entertainment-wise it was great. Um, I think uh, Crows and Dogs over Swans and Saints would have made uh, better uh, better games. Uh, I could be wrong though, because Cardinal City was quite a good game. A very good game, actually. Moving on to the Crows. As I said, they got cheated out of uh, being in the, in the finals, but they played well throughout the season. Um, they did also, like, it's not entirely like, oh, it's simply because of the uh, um goal umpire. Yes, of course, if, if the umpire got it right, they're in the eight, but... Also, there's some games that they didn't perform too well in as well. So that's to be said. They were great most of the season, but not. there were some games where they were not good enough. Um, against Collingwood, I know it's Collingwood. They were the best team all year. But in the last quarter, the Crows didn't look like they belonged there in a way. I mean, they, they were just hanging on by a thread. They were just hanging on, defending okay, I guess. But <laughs> Collingwood were all over them. They just couldn't handle it, I feel. And in the end, they lost, uh, and it was coming, really. Only by a point, but that whole quarter, they won the back foot. So that's one game as an example. Other, another game was GWS at home. The Giants were on a good win streak. Like, that has to be said, they were great at the time. But I think Adelaide didn't really perform that well in that game either. So that has to be said. Um, so that's a couple of examples. But there's a few other games as well that didn't perform that well. But most of the season, they were great. And they looked like there'd be a genuine threat in the finals. And they were robbed of that, they were robbed of that chance. But I think next year... They will be back, and they will be in the eight. I, I, I'm calling. I mean, it's not an outlandish prediction. I, I don't think it's like a stupid. Uh, I don't think stupid is the right word, but I don't think it's like a crazy prediction to say Adelaide will make the eight. I think a few of you watching will agree with me. Adelaide will make the eight next year. Um, but overall, I think uh, definitely not a failure, especially considering where they were the last few years. But. Uh, it's definitely a big learning curve and uh, a, a confidence boost for them. And I think they can do uh, great next season. Essendon. <sighs> Similar to Port Adelaide, except not as good. Uh, that's my consensus on Essendon. Um, so just like the dogs, Essendon had some games against the big guns where they played well, uh, but couldn't do it for the whole game. Although Essendon only just, they lost by less than a goal to Port Adelaide twice. Uh, and they lost by a few points to Collingwood. Obviously they got smashed by Collingwood at the end, but we'll get to that. In the first half of the season, up to the point, not even just the first half. They lost to Geelong by a lot of, mar by a big margin. Um, 
at the JMHBA towards like I don't know round 16 whatever Geelong smashed them uh, in a certain round and then the following week the dogs beat them comfortably as well that was a turning point before that Geelong game Essendon looked very good looked like a strong team um, they played against the big guns and they you know they were pretty close you know yes they lost to Port twice and Collingwood when they were red hot both of them um, and they played very well in those games and the other games as well they played very well they looked like a genuine finals contender that could easily uh, you know at least be 5th to 8th just like the Bulldogs should, should have been 5th to 8th as well Essendon looked very good they looked like okay they could be playing in finals in September they looked very strong and then after that Geelong game, everything changed. They turned into a different team. <laughs> it's like Port after that Carlson game. Essendon, the Essendon that played most of that season did not turn up for the rest of it. I don't know what happened. I really don't know. I, 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 I want, I'm trying to make sense of it myself, just like Port Adelaide. US, any Essendon fans, and Port fans of course are previous, for previously, any Essendon fans fill me in because you were two different teams this season. Just like Port Adelaide, you were two different teams. Most of the season, you were playing well, you were strong, you were definitely making finals. The rest of the season, you looked like bottom four. Like, you, you played like bo a bottom four team the last few rounds. I don't know what happened, but they turned into a different team. They completely choked. Um, so, yeah. Um, I, like to, I like to compare this to Western Bulldogs. Because Western Bulldogs, it's mainly because of the last few rounds, they were still like, looking like a contender towards the end. Essendon's season just fell apart completely. I think both of their seasons fell apart, but for Essendon it happened so much more dramatically. And then the Bulldogs it was just like a big surprise. Um, but yeah, uh, both teams I felt definitely failed <laughs> this season. I know Essendon, not much was expected of them this season. I mean, I put them 17th, so that has to be said. We'll get to that video soon. Uh, but Essendon, even though they were not expected to do that well, they still, based off the context of the actual season, it is a failure that they didn't make the eight because I, f I feel like they were good enough to do so, but they started playing so badly, you know, after that Geelong game. Uh, and the Bulldogs as well started playing badly towards the end. I think both teams will look at their season as failures, but Adelaide will not, even though Adelaide are behind the Western Bulldogs. It's all about um, relativity, is, is that the right term? Positions aren't always determined of like how, how much better your season was. It's about your standards and about, you know, I, I feel like the dogs finishing ninth is worse than the crows finishing 10th. You know, it, it depends on who you are. Geelong finishing 12th is the worst of them all <laughs> out of the teams uh, below the eighth, below the eight. Geelong finished 12th. That's a poor season. I was speaking to Darajo um, when I came to Australia for finals week one. And he, he, he said after the, um, after round two, he said he said after round two that he didn't think Geelong would make the eight. And they were premiers at the time. And I was just like, wow, you fought it back then? He was like, yeah. I was like, okay, well, he knew something I didn't because they did not make the eight. Geelong were bloody, um, I wouldn't say awful, but they had a bad start. Then they recovered a little bit. They started playing well again. Then they had a bit of a rough patch. Got a few wins in here and there, and then they started being a bit inconsistent. Um, in the end, obviously, as you can see, I mean, you can't see it because I'm not showing you. <laughs> I'm looking at the ladder and you're not. But they didn't have a good enough season. Um, they had some great moments, some great wins, but also some big losses. I think the start was pretty significant. Losing their first three games was pretty bad. Just the first two games are pretty tough. Um, but the, uh, the Gold Coast game in round three as well, that's another one. They had a few bad losses uh, this season um, and they just didn't play that well. Considering how good they were the previous year, they really uh, fell off quite a bit and that has to be said. And they've been, they're always in the finals. They have been on a, there wasn't a big, big streak, right, of constantly making the finals. This year, they've just simply not made it. And uh, just like a few teams above them, uh, it would definitely be failure for them <laughs> this season, considering the standards of Geelong Football Club. We've got to remember they are Geelong Football Club. <laughs> the amount of finals they play, the amount of flags they've won, the amount of grand finals they've played in, they are Geelong. <laughs> they are Geelong. Finishing 12th <laughs> with just 10 wins out of, tw out of 23 is... Uh... My camera's gone off. It's been 30 minutes. Uh, this was meant to be 30 seconds a team. <laughs> We're early on 12th. 
Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, as I was saying, like 12th place is ultimately failure, especially for Geelong. <laughs> especially for a top team like Geelong. So uh, yeah, I, I think they'll be stronger next year. But uh, this season is definitely a big write-off for them. Um, and it's a big fall-off considering where they were last year. In 13th, Richmond. Uh, also failure for sure. Most people expected them to be in the 8. Um, I expected them to be a contender but miss out. Uh, people went mad at me for putting them 9th. Again, I'll get to that in the, in the reacting video. But like, people were mad at me. were like, how could you put them 9th? I'm just like, if I put a team 9th, that means... They'll be fighting for the finals. <laughs> I'm not going to put a team knife. I don't think they're a contender, at least. It's just that, you know, the seven teams I put above them, I felt they were better. And then I chose between Carlton and Richmond. I chose Carlton. <laughs> and I guess that prediction worked out. But um, in the end, they finished worse than what I predicted. Richmond, despite having... I think, did they have a good start? I can't remember. They had an okay start, I think. But they fell off pretty hard, just like Carlton, just like Sydney. Um... I guess the Giants didn't fall off. They they never got started and they came up later on. But just like Carson and Sydney, Richmond fell off uh, quite hard. Um, it looked like they might cover it at some points in the season. I even, like, when they played the Western Bulldogs, I think towards the end of the season, I tipped them in my tipping. I, I took a risk because I thought, oh, maybe Richmond might do something. Didn't do anything. <laughs> Bulldogs beat them comfortably. Um, but, yeah, uh, ultimately failure. Once again, Richmond were not good enough. Uh, they had, they have a better squad than 13th. I think that uh, it's pre it's pretty obvious. <laughs> they have a better squad than 13th. Um, I said a very harsh statement. I said earlier to, in this video, actually, I said in the community post that uh, St Kilda had wasted a final spot, and in that same post, I said that the dogs, the crows, the cats, and the tigers would have done better. I stand by that. I think Richmond would have done better. Than the Saints in the eight. I could be wrong, but I'm I'm gonna put it out there. But yeah, 13th is still uh, not good enough. They are better than 13th. Fremantle 14th. Last year, they were in the eight uh, and won a final. Especially from like, against the Dogs who were experienced in the finals. They were like 40 points down. They made a record comeback. They were brilliant, Fremantle. Um, this season, not so much. A few nice wins here and there, but all, overall. A terrible season uh, from the WA team. It's not a good year for WA in general. The one good thing for West Coast is that Frio are also not very good. Uh, they still got 10 wins. Same amount of wins as Richmond and Geelong. And only one win less than the Crows and Essendon. And I said the Crows had a great season. So that has to be pointed out. But <laughs> despite getting 40 points, uh, Fremantle were just not uh, very good. So... Uh, it's a write-off season for them. I guess most seasons for them are, are write-offs. Um, I know someone mentioned to me that them finishing in the eight last year was like a one-off fluke. Um, maybe it was, but there was something there. <laughs> and that's why I, like, ba I based it completely off that. Like They made the eight and uh, they, they won a final. Next year, top four. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> Uh, the, the, just just an awful team. Like you, you expect them to do well, and then they just don't. And when you don't think they'll do well, they actually do actually do something. So uh, they're just one of those unpredictable teams, Fremantle. But they got some win, big wins this year. They beat in some big teams this year. But that's Fremantle. Over the years, that's Fremantle. They beat teams they shouldn't beat, and then they lose to teams they should they should beat. That's just Fremantle. They're like one of the most unpredictable. Maybe they are the most unpredictable team in the comp. Who's more, who's more unpredictable than Fremantle? They are ridiculous. In 15th, Gold Coast. I don't know if that's success or failure, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> I, I can't think straight with Gold Coast. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand them anymore. <laughs> like, it, they're just very frustrating to me. They, they're just there. They either they're, they're, they challenge for the finals and they miss out anyway. Or they just low down somewhere. They're not. They don't do anything. You're like. It's like that meme when you like poke someone with a stick. You're like, do something, do something. That's Gold Coast. You're, you're poking them with a stick. You're just like, do something. Then do something. <laughs> to be fair, they had some good games. Um, I think they beat Richmond and they almost beat Melbourne, but didn't. They did beat the Lions though. Um, so they had some good games here and there, but. Overall, it's another season of why are they here? <laughs> uh, when they introduced the 19th Tasmanian team, 
I wonder if they'll think about removing someone like Gold Coast. Or they'll add a... They're, they're going to add another one for sure. Like, I don't think it'll be too long before... Like, I don't think they keep it at 19 for too long. I think there will either be a 20th license or they take someone away. And that would be Gold Coast. Or they won't do that or they might do something else. But I don't think they'll st it'll stay at 19 for too long. I, I give it two seasons max. Um, but yeah, Gold Coast. You tell me, guys. Were they successful or a failure? Because they don't do anything anyway. So how do you judge them? <laughs> I'm genuinely serious. <laughs> Every season, either they challenge 38, then they slip away, or they just don't do anything. It's just like, what do you judge them on? <laughs> they played well in this game. To be fair, though, they had just one less win than Geelong, Richmond, and Fremantle. So that's what we pointed out. <laughs> just two wins less than Adelaide. Then we got the bottom three. Um... I feel like everyone from 1st to 14th was at some point a contender, even Fremantle. At one point, they were near the 8, but they slipped down, obviously. Gold Coast, I think Gold Coast actually up there at one point as well. So 1st to 15th, pretty much, they were at least at one point in the season were close to the 8, sort of. The bottom three were nowhere near anything, um, including my own team, Hawthorne, ruined 16th. Now, to be fair, we got 7 wins, and we beat uh, Collingwood... Western Bulldogs, St Kilda and Brisbane. We beat the two grand finalists. So four of our seven wins were, you know, against the top nine. So I will take that. We've had some good moments, some very good moments. But most of the season we have gotten beaten quite badly. That Geelong one was quite a big one because we we're leading at half time. Then we got smashed by a big margin. Um, we have been thrown around <laughs> like a punching bag for most of the season. Uh, but there are some positives to take. Uh, we got a good uh, young squad. We got some players that look promising. That will be only be better for for next season. I think uh, I don't think mid eight next season, obviously. But I think we'll be a bit better than sixteenth. Um, I think the players will learn a lot from this season, and uh, there's a lot of inexperience in the team. But so far, I think we've shown something um, in the wins that we have got, especially against Collingwood and Brisbane. Um, so I mean, Brisbane had a bad fight, MCG record anyway. So I think. <laughs> Winning that maybe isn't as big as, as it would be elsewhere, but still a pretty significant win. Beaten Collingwood as well, um, and obviously the other games that we won, uh, smashing West Coast included. <laughs> we had quite a few nice wins, uh, but that's it. There's, you know, a, a few nice wins and some big wins against big teams, but most of the season, not so much. Uh, I don't know to call it. If I don't know whether to call it success or failure, because. A lot of people had us slow down anyway. Like, we had a few people predicting. Like, all of the spoon predictions were either Hawthorne, GWS, or something else. So, like, if, if there was a lot of spoon predictions for us. Um, so, based off that, 16th with a few nice wins is all right. Um, but, yeah, you can be the judge. <laughs> were we successful or a failure? <laughs> because I don't think we failed because we weren't expected to do much anyway. But, yeah. And then 17th and 18th, uh, North Melbourne and West Coast. West Coast this time getting the spoon as, as opposed to North Melbourne uh, last year. Both teams got an extra win. But ultimately, despite having an extra win each, they were both worse than last year. Uh, West Coast just got smashed by bigger margins. Yes, they got more wins this year. But that's because the Western Borders had to fall asleep for some reason. Um, but yeah, like just a terrible season with West Coast. I thought they'd be better this season. I thought, hey, they might, they can't be worse than last season. They were worse than last season, much worse. And they got smashed left, right and centre by almost anyone. And North Melbourne didn't get smashed as much, but still got smashed pretty badly. So, uh, yeah, West Coast percentage on 53%. North Melbourne, 71. Um, both pretty low, but 53 is pretty significantly low. <laughs> um, North Melbourne would just a bit better than West Coast. But I think North Melbourne have a better near future than West Coast do. Uh, North Melbourne have got a good coach, uh, decent players in their squad. I think they'll be better next year. For West Coast, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with them, so we'll see. But ultimately, two terrible seasons. So to summarise, the West Coast Eagles definitely failed. The North Melbourne Kangaroos definitely failed. I'm happy to say that. Hawthorne. I don't know if we failed or succeeded because we're not that good anyway. Gold Coast, same thing. What are the, why are they even here? Fremantle, definitely failed. Richmond, definitely failed. Rich, Geelong, 100% failed. Essendon, 
Based on expectations, no, but yes, they did fail based on the actual season. So did the Bulldogs. Adelaide, I don't think failed. Um, I just think they were very good and they missed out because of the umpires. So we'll let them go. Uh, Sydney. I mean, they made the eight, but in the finals, they failed. Regular season, maybe not. Um, same with St. Kilda. Regular season, I guess they didn't fail technically because they made the eight, even though they performed badly. In the finals, they failed. The Giants were very successful. Um, expectations were not that high on them, uh, but they proved to be one of the best teams in the comp. So uh, no arguments there. They were a huge success, and I think next year they'll be an even stronger contender because this year they could win the flag as well. You know, They were close to beating Collingwood. Uh, Carlton, successful. First finals in 10 years, and they got to the prelims. So... You can't really argue with that. They were uh, bloody brilliant in the two games that they won. And against the Lions, they took uh, a 30-point lead against a team that won every game there. They just were not... <laughs> they, weren't, they were too tired to keep it up for the whole game. And that coupled with the Brisbane Lions being so good at the Gabba, you know, uh, they couldn't quite get there. But I also feel like if they got to the grand final, Collingwood would have beaten them, I think, uh, a bit more comfortably as well. Because Carter would have been far too tired by then. Um, but still a success. Melbourne, it has to be failure. I'm sorry, but, you know, the way they won the flag two years ago, to be out on straight sets for the second year in a row, it's not good enough. And it's even worse because they could have won both their finals games, but they couldn't kick straight. So it is failure. Port Adelaide also failure, um, for sure. I mean, look how much they capitulated in the second half of the season. And then Brisbane and Collingwood, I think both were successful. Collingwood, obviously successful. Brisbane, even they lost the grand final, Considering they're not good at that ground anyway, and the Magpies are a better team, I think they'll lose by four points. You know, yes, it is a failure to lose, but as a whole, as a season as a whole, I don't think they failed as a team, um, and uh, hopefully they bounce back. But if the Lions don't win the flag in the near future, it is a failed era because they have had, they have had opportunities there to really go all the way, and they haven't done it. So that has to be said. They had a great season this year. Last year they went so bad, I don't think, in the finals. But if they don't deliver a flag some point soon, you have to look at that and think, ah, they had the chance to do it. It's a failed era. This is your boy Davidoff. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a good day and goodbye. 42 minutes. Let's take it slow. Where you go, I go too. And if you hit the bottom, I'm going down with you. Let's take it slow. Who cares where we gotta be? You know you'll have a good time where I